We're going to look at a VCR today. It's a National NV870, and I've got the service manual here. This machine is from around the mid 80s. It's a slightly more high end model than the NV850, which was quite popular. This one didn't seem to be as popular, I didn't see as many around. It appears to be based on the NV450. The shape and the mechanism seems very similar. I think I've got one of those somewhere which we'll look at one day. So it's a standard VHS machine, but with hi-fi sound. So there's stereo sound. It's got controls there. It has independent recording levels. I don't think there's any auto level control. It has slow motion with controls on the front for that. I'm trying this new recording angle and I don't think it's very good because the camera is in the way. On the back there, this is a power machine, so it's got PNC for the video input and output, and then there's stereo audio. So this machine I've had since around the late 90s, was given it, and it has never worked. It was given to me because it didn't work, and I've never tried to fix it, so I think maybe we should do that today, see if we can get it working. It has some sort of power supply problem. I'll plug it in, and you'll see some stuff comes up. Nothing comes up on the clock, and some too much stuff comes up on there. That light's always on, which suggests some sort of power supply issue. Uh, let's try and investigate that. I think we'll go for the normal top-down camera for that, because then I can actually get in there close up and reach into things. Let's get this thing apart and see what's going on in there. Now, I do have another one of these machines that is in somewhat working order, I think. As uh, if we get really stuck, we might be able to swap some boards around or take measurements. But hopefully with the service manual, we'll be able to work out what to measure. Start looking at power supply stuff. Can't remember how much of an investigation I've done on this already. So, uh, lots of stuff doing this. Got the timer tuner board here. And they have super caps on them. And interesting, these ones are in good condition. Usually... There's all this yellow stuff coming out of those caps. So they go bad. You can disconnect them by unplugging that cable there. It says there. It says, when replacing timer circuit parts, remove backup cap. Pretty sure I've tried some things in this before. So this, no switch mode power supply in this. It's just a transformer. And then there's some rectifiers and things on that board on the transformer. Then there's various regulators around. You see there's one here on a heatsink around the back. There's a regulator that is pressed into... What's the transistor for a regulator? Pressed into the video head there. So that will keep the head slightly warm. Got some stuff here. I think this is the Hi-Fi Audio. Got an add-on to the regular design. Or the non-Hi-Fi design. Hi-Fi Audio Amplifier. Take all this stuff apart and look at it. There's more regulators over here. Heat sink around there with two more thingies on that. Looks like a fuse has been replaced there. The fuses normally have this colored band on it so you can tell what the value is, but that one there is different. It doesn't have that. I wonder if that's been replaced. There's one amp. I'll just check that. It's all right. Okay. I wonder if something happened in that fuse was blown and replaced by somebody else. Just for fun, let's have a look in the bottom as well before we get too carried away with making measurements. We'll just tack that down. So, pretty standard national Panasonic mechanism with die cast chassis. The back tension band there's fallen off the strip that it's on, so that would have to be get replaced if we get this thing up and running. It's got the idler tire gear thing there which always slips and causes the tape to chew. Now the cap stand's pretty rusty and crusty. Pinch roller still exists. Get into the bottom. Soon we'll have to take the front off as well to help with taking measurements. Take the front off, you gotta take the bottom off too. This is another machine from the scrapping pile. Like those G20 20 ones that we were looking at the other day. Since I already have a better unit in the collection Getting rid of some of the double ups and triple ups. That screw has got a really flat head on it compared to the others. Really 
sure why that is. It maybe it's dense in less. Strange. I don't remember seeing that in other machines like this. Okay, so there's a capstan motor and that belt it's in reasonable condition. On the side of the head, there's a little bit of a scraping noise. Some bugs stuck on that wire. Loading motor. The belt's pretty slippy on there, so we'll probably have to do something about that if we get this running. The bottom board here. I don't know what that one's for. If we take the front panel off. Now we have to undo some screws first to do that. Let's just put it up here. Put it all upside down. Get it all opened up, and then we'll start taking some voltage measurements and see what we can find. Panel comes off. Here's the earphone socket. Unplugs. Yeah, one thing to check since that wasn't lighting up at all, there'll be some voltages to check with the filament and then the grid or cathode or whatever voltage it is, the minus something volts. Now, this bottom board, you can see there's a hinge there, so that should fold out once you undo the red screws. This is servo or video. It might be the video processing since that's where the connectors are. Oh, well, that's all the rest of the stuff. Okay, and then another board comes out. Looks like that board there is video stuff. This one down here, this bottom board's the servo. It's got motor drivers there. There's audio pack there, so it must have audio stuff on it as well. And there's more video stuff on there. That's all just a mix of things. Let's put that away for now. Clip that back into place. And we'll flip back to the top side. And also tipped all the dust out of it. Now in the state it's in, I'm not sure how happy it is to be left powered up for long periods of time, so it's going to make measuring a little bit tedious. I don't really want to accidentally burn it out even more by leaving it plugged in for a long period of time, stressing something out. There are more screws involved in that. Oh, it's got a big screw holding that in. The main power wires there goes straight down to that bottom board. Yeah, maybe we should just leave that attached for now. Be careful of having bits and pieces floating around where there's the AC mains input down there. We don't really want to have anything touching that accidentally. Alright, we'll have a look in the service manual and we'll see what kind of things we could look at. Looks like I can get it in the silver one which we have and this black version. I haven't seen that around. I've seen a couple of those. In an idea of the date, they it appears that the first two digits of the order number of the service manual is the manufactured date of the machine, or more or less. It seems to be consistent there, so that says 85. So I've owned this thing for more than 20 years. And yeah, it's nearly 40 years old, nearly. Okay, it says there that NV870 uses the D1 mechanical chassis. Please refer to the service manual D1 chassis, except the confirmation adjustment as shown below. So they must have skipped over a bunch of stuff, which is in the D1 chassis manual. I discovered before, look, here it is. It's just loose stuff. D1, is that what they referred to in the order number? 8310. 490. Yeah, so it's a photocopy of it, it's not the original, but this shows you all the bits and pieces about this mechanism, how to set it up and adjust things. Yeah, the, this stuff, that there, curling of the tape, is the problem that we had in that NVM5 video camera, which I'm still thinking that I should try and get that working better in another video. Yeah, because it was picking the top of the tape. Yeah, we need all this stuff. The special alignment tape. It has the signals on it that you look at when you're aligning things. Yeah, I don't have one of those. Anyway, we don't need to worry about too much of that stuff because I'm hoping if we can solve it, it's just a power supply issue and everything else other than those few mechanical things we pointed out are probably in good condition. Because I suspect machine hasn't seen much use because it just had that problem and then that was the end of it. So they show you how to take everything apart. Simple replacing the video head, 
electrical adjustment procedures, power supply, that's what you look at that, 5 volt regulator, that's the only thing they get you to test. So I think what we're trying to do is fix something that's outside the scope of the normal, normal procedures, TP1003, where's that? Could be anywhere, probably on the bottom, because that's where that main uh, thing goes to, that main power cable. No, those are all TP300s, or 3000s, oh, and 2s. I think there's some way of looking that up where it's located. I don't think we can even measure that because you have to put it into stop mode and we can't even get this thing to power up at the moment. So that's not going to work. Alright, we'll carry on looking or finding other stuff. Probably need to trace the circuits out and work out what to measure based on what's in the circuits. Just block diagrams. This is how the little dots on the display light up to show the different status. Oh look, power supply and power transformer. Okay, that's probably a good place to start. Alright, so we've got this part here, which is this main board here with the transformer attached to it. And it's got various rectifiers. And then there's a couple of different voltages. And it's also got those connections to the cylinder heater, the power transistor PCV 3, 1 and 2. Two of those go straight into this thing, and that forms regulated 6 volts from the cylinder, and this one, which has a fuse just out on a limb, makes the motor regulate, but it doesn't tell you what the voltage is there. That's a bit weird. Motor rig, 25 volt cap, as then is, I have to look up what that voltage is. And then we've got plus and minus 45 volts, AC 6 volts, be the heaters, unregulated 17 and regulated 6. Then there's power supply section of presumably that main bottom board where that cable that one that has thicker wires than the others goes down. So we'll measure that second. Do the one that goes to the timer board first, and then we'll go to that one and see what we find. So on that other board, it's then got to where those other two regulators on the heat sinks plugged in, and then that's making 12.7. System control 5 volts, motor rig switched 12 volts, switched regulated 5 volts, power off signal, which that's a bit dodgy at the moment because the power on LED is lighting on the front even though it's not on. And then there's some more 12.7 and 5 volts. Okay, let's start with stuff that comes over to the timer board, which is this wire here with the blue. I don't know why it's got that bit of tape on it. Uh, it got damaged or something? Maybe it was just to identify it. Presumably it's a one-to-one -one cable. Appears to be. Okay, it's written there which side is pin one. The pin one's the coloured light wire, so that's pretty obvious. Minus 45, pretty close. Then we've got an AC 6 volts. Yep. And then we've got an unregulated 17. That's 19, suppose that's close enough, and then a regulated 6, 5.5. So all that's more or less there. The voltages are a little bit wonky, but they are there. So then the next one would be to check this. But yeah, it's weird that all that stuff there was just on. Lots of stuff that's on and an LED there. Okay, we're going to go onto the bottom board and look at this first. Yes, unreg 10, yeah. Then that 46 volts. Then we've got a plus... 17, a motor regulated, 13 I guess. Okay, well those seem to exist. So now what? Now I guess we've got to look in, start looking at this part here. Switched regulated 12 volts. What we need to do is work out where the power switch signal comes from and see whether that's on or off. I suppose we also need to look at ripple on these signals because, yeah, maybe some caps gone bad somewhere. But it wouldn't be surprising if all the caps have gone bad. Okay, I've done it, a bit of measuring down here in this circuit, and the power off signal says comes from system control, which turns on this transistor, which then steals the base current from the the regulators out there to turn them off. It says power off is on, so when that transistor is on, when it's been turned on by that signal, it steals the base current and turns off the power regulators to turn off the power. 
So currently that shows as being on. So that's off, which means the regulators are on. So something's telling it to be turned on when it shouldn't really be turned on because you've only just plugged it in and these things always start up in the off condition. And to prove that, uh, a way you can prove it is by just running this gear so that it's not in its stop position and then switch on the power and see will it return to the stop position because as part of turning on the VCR will get itself back into its normal resting stop position. If we set that to somewhere that's not stop, turn on the power and it runs like it would to reset itself back to the stop position. So that proves that the the main part of the system, the system servo section and control section is functioning and can get itself back to the stop position. So now what I want to do is find out and trace where does that power on signal come from or power off signal because that might lead us to what's causing the problem. Looking at some schematics for a while, looks like it's the system control IC which decides that the power is on or not and then that signal goes to the regulators that get switched on or off and there's also a feedback back to the timer section power on is low whereas that same net which is here over here is called power off high which went to that other part where we saw it is low at the moment meaning on so that comes out of the IC power on there Power on when it's low, so unless that's being pulled by something else, which, yeah, we'd have to determine that, then, yeah, it must be that I see that saying it. So there's a power switch signal which comes from a power on signal, which goes low coming from the timer board, and that goes through power, power switch low, goes into buffer there, I don't know what that goes to, but more directly it goes through a capacitor, 22 nan to a transistor and then that pulls on another transistor which resets the IC the system control IC that says reset low through that with a capacitor thing on it now looking at the circuit here these transistors seem to be involved in a power on reset and a reset when you press the power switch and I've checked the power on reset seems to be okay Got the scope here where the this channel here 2 is joined to the power supply 5 volts for the system control IC and then this other one here is the reset signal which comes off here so that seems to be fine because it's giving it 50 milliseconds of reset after power up before it releases the reset line so that seems to be okay says active low reset so that's fine, that's good. What I'm not sure is, is there a, a reset signal when you press the power switch? It doesn't appear to be a reset signal coming in when you press the power switch, which is interesting. So I need to check, is there anything coming in when you press the power switch? It doesn't appear to be anything coming in from there when you press the power switch. So perhaps we need to change our investigation to the timer board, because this stuff here seems to be okay. The 5 volts is a bit low, which is interesting. It's 4.7, whereas in the voltage tables they say it should be 5.0. But I'm not sure if that's because it's... I was wondering if that's because it wasn't resetting properly, but it seems like the chip is resetting properly. So maybe there's nothing wrong on the system control stuff. Still not sure why it thinks it's powered up, though. Not sure what decides whether it should be powered up or not. It's, there's some stuff going on down here where the power in signal sort of awkward using resistors with the cassette in switch so that when you press a push a cassette in it will power it up if it's powered off at that point and it's there's some notes here that I can't understand where it's saying that cassette switch 2 on low PO2 timing S2 and it says PO3 timing power on L PO2 timing S1 Ah, so what does that mean? I'm not sure what S1 and S2 are Oh, it's something 
that's the mode switch. Oh, uh, maybe the mode switch changes what can turn the power on. I mean, there isn't any nasty ripple or anything on the 5 volts going to that system control IC. So its power supply seems to be okay. I think we've been on a bit of a wild goose chase here. Pretty sure this system control stuff is working fine. And that really what we need to be looking at is the timer operations circuit. Which should have been pretty obvious because when the VCR is plugged in, the clock does not flash. And that is quite a fundamental thing that, yeah, should should have prompted where we need to look. So we'll start looking at the timer circuit and check the power supplies, crystals and resets and see what that tells us. It's later on now and we're going to carry on having a look at this. If I can remember where we were up to, I think I decided that the system control stuff at the bottom was more or less functioning. And I thought another way we can prove that was to try put a tape into it, because if that is working, then that should work. So let's see. Still giving the same issue with that stuff just randomly on and the clock is not flashing, but and see, it is trying to accept a tape. Get that semi stuck in there now, yes. Okay, well that does prove that it's a little bit more working. Uh, maybe a sensor is wrecked. Anyway, well, that does prove that, prove a bit more that the system control parts of the circuit are more or less functioning. So we need to turn our attention to this clock part, as we probably should have done in the first place since the clock is not flashing, which kind of makes it obvious that there's something wrong with the clock. Presumably that will just return itself to home. There we go. So we're going to take a look at that. I had a little bit of a look through the service manual again and we've got the operation PCB schematic which is the little board along the front where the power switch is. The, the power switch there it's just a pull down on one line and the power LED that is always on is an LED off of the 5 volt net. Don't really need to look any further at that board because it's not going to provide us with anything. So the next one along the line is the timer PCB, which is what has the clock on it. There's a clock IC that makes the clock work. That has two crystals. And then there's this one here, which I guess is the rest of the timer stuff. It's also got the key scanning and lots of other bits and pieces going on on it. And that one there has also a crystal. And there's a, a reset. And that reset comes from this chip here. It comes out of that line there. If I looked that up, there's some sort of thing there called timer reset. This is reset circuit. It's got a power supply coming in. There's just a transistor with some biasing resistors and an LED off of it. Not sure how that functions. Anyway, that supposedly makes a reset that goes to another transistor there and into there, the reset line, active below. So we'll check that. We'll check the power supply on this chip. And then that reset output it goes... It's got a 0.1 mic there. There, reset, active low reset. So we should check those. Check the power to the chip. Then we'll check the clocks. Get the scope on. And then from this point here, there's a power on signal which goes out to the other stuff. So I think that was that's what's saying that the power is always on, which is what's powering up the rest of the VCR. There's a power on input, which I think just comes from that button from the power switch. As we saw, there's other ways of powering it up. The timer record recording function can power it up, and the inserting a cassette can power it up. Yeah, you know, there's lines that they change their function based on what the VCR is doing. There was a block diagram earlier on which explains that better than what you see on the schematic. Yeah, the overall block diagram 
power on signal via the mode switch. Oh, I see. So that's how when when it's not in the ejected position, when you power it up, this the mode switch will trigger the power on so that it can reset everything back into the stop position. There's a cassette switch, the mode switch, and the power button, and the timer can all power it up. Anyway, well that's not what we're interested in at the moment. We're interested in measuring the timer circuit. It's all on this board here. We've got the... It's all in the dark. The two ICs, and there's a crystal, the other crystal, and then that one looks like it's in a resonator. Yeah, let's check those. Start by checking the power supplies to them. 4.6, so that's more or less good. And then the other chip, the 64 pin, that's also ground on pin 1. And the power supply on pin 33, it says 4.9 volts. Pin 33, also 4.58, that's more or less in keeping with the theme. Now we want to look at power up resets and oscillators. TP7507 and now I want to look at the reset going into this chip which comes off that weird little transistor circuit which is there, there's the LED it goes into pin 22 so, and it's active low we probably have to trigger on the power up trigger on the power up and monitor the reset yeah, I'm not convinced about that pin 1 is the, oh, channel 1 is the power supply that rises up, but then the supposedly the reset line is just this waffling up thing. That doesn't seem right, but I also can't understand how that reset even works in the first place. I don't see what is giving it a like a threshold or hysteresis. It's just a transistor with some biasing on it. it doesn't seem to have the ability to be a reset. It should be pulling down low at power up. There's an adjustment for that. Uh, I need to look in the adjustment section of the manual and we'll see if there is an adjustment for that reset thing and see if that will tell us how it works. Well, there is an adjustment procedure for that. That we need to don't connect the AC power and attach a power supply set to 3.7 volts to TP504 and then adjust the trim pot to get this waveform when you're measuring on TP7501 and then there's a second one where you link two pins slightly different voltage and you adjust a different trim pot to get 62 milliseconds so we'll try that dig out a power supply and then we'll see if we can do this measurement or adjustment so I've got a hopefully good power supply here which we'll just have to plug in and warm up for a couple of hours so it stabilizes and then we'll Try and make these adjustments. So the first one we need is 3.7 volts. Okay, that's probably close enough. It says plus or minus 0 0.05. Now you just join that on and hope for the best. And now we need to connect the scope onto TP501. Yeah, there's a test point on the reset anyway. I could have just used that. So the pin, and then we inject this this voltage into 504. We join the voltage onto there, 504. Scope. Can we see this at the same time? I'm going to put it back onto just running mode and set it to 2 volts per division. They show that 2 volts per division, 1 millisecond. Oh yeah, it did something. So it it's free running? Really? Just from pulsing that on, it's now got a clock on it, which is just keeps going. So what's powering it? That's weird. I guess that gives you a chance to adjust it. Got these fancy adjusting tools a while ago. Haven't even used them yet. Let's find one that fits. Hmm, yeah. So you just keep it joined on? It's way too fast though. It says it needs to be 7.8 milliseconds. And this is going to take ages to adjust because it's really twitchy and it seems to switch between multiple positions. Guessing that's powering up a very like the clock circuit inside this that uses one of those oscillators and yeah getting a clock signal to occur. Since this is supposedly running now, I wonder if we can measure the crystals, 
see if they're doing anything. Those should be running at a certain frequency. I suppose it doesn't run because the whole thing's not powered up. Oh yeah, it runs when that gets turned on. Let's see, is that running at the right frequency? There's 4.2 megahertz. Yeah, so that is fine. Okay, I think I've worked out what you're actually supposed to do with this now. You're supposed to adjust it so that the signal drops from that, where it's a very long duty cycle, to the exact point that it drops to a higher frequency. So that, which is... So they're saying 7.8, so that is 7.8. I'm measuring just the high point and thinking that yeah, that this this high period would be getting progressively la larger as you turn this. But no, it's just when one complete cycle is around 7.8, which is that. So we've done that one now. That is adjusted. So we can do the next one. Must be done after the first one. Set the voltage on the power supply to 4.4 volts this time. 4.4, that's probably close enough. And then connect the power supply. Is set 4.4. Connect the power supply to 505. Not where we're down here now. It says then connect a jumper between 504 to 505. And now we're adjusting this one up here, I think. 62 milliseconds. Okay. Yeah. Alright, so we've done that adjustment. I mean, it's going to just jump into life now. Now it's got timer clock adjustment. Just C7502, which is that. Six volts now. And connect it to 7502. 7502. Skip that one for now because we've. That's about a slight frequency adjustment. Uh, what I want to do is check that resistor that appears to be cracked for some reason. Find out what. What is it? Yeah, to do with the 12 volt regulator, there's that thing there. There's 12 ohms. I wonder if we can measure that in circuit. That's got kind of high resistance. 12 ohms. It's okay, let's we'll see if this powers up. We haven't really done very much of this anyway. Nope, same as before. Uh, we haven't checked the crystals on that chip. So, oh, we should check the reset going into that chip. It comes out of there on. 49, and a bit easier to check, no not 49, it says 4.9 volts on pin 21, so let's look at that, see if there's something going on, but we need that in conjunction with a power supply, in conjunction with a power supply, which we'll get on pin 40, so that did give a reset pulse, as you can see there, channel 2, the power supply, rows, and then 10 milliseconds after, Ish, dying eight milliseconds after the reset line went high, so it came out of reset. So that's good. That's what we want. So next, we'll have a look at the crystal. Got a three point five six on pins sixty one and sixty two. That thing. And you can measure it on the higher side. Let's give that a go. It doesn't seem to have anything on it. Okay, no clock on that chip there. Okay, but we're going to have to save that investigation for another day because I have to go and do some other stuff now. But that's something to think about. Why is there no clock running on that? We need to check the power supplies. BDD on pin 33. And it's got 5 volts, but that is not running. It does not appear to be running. They do say you can measure it. Definitely no, nothing going on on there. It's supposed to be around 3.5 MHz. But there ain't nothing. Even when you push the auto set button, it does not find anything. It's pulled high. So what we could do is join a function generator up and just drive it externally and see if the thing starts up. But, yeah, there you go. We'll have to leave it there for today. Done some interesting things at least. And we'll think about what does that mean. Is it as easy as that little resonator thing has stopped? A one mega ohm load across it, which measures fine. Yes, yeah, so let's wait and see. Might have to go hunting to find another little oscillator thing that we can try in there. It's definitely being biased. And if that doesn't work, then I guess it's the chip. 
Unless when we take this off, there's some other dodgy business going on under the chip. But for now, it looks like the oscillator has stopped. Got a function generator here, and I'm going to try and inject a clock signal where that oscillator seems to be not functioning and see if that changes anything. So I'm going to set this up to what it says the frequency is that you should be able to measure on that point on that oscillator which is 3.56 megahertz 4 volts peak to peak there you go 3.56 megahertz and the amplitude we want something like 4 I'm going to confirm that with the scope and hopefully well something's going to happen get that attached to that ground there now Yes, you can see on the scope there, there is our 3. Point whatever megahertz. And we'll just go into the offset and tweak that off a bit so that it's going between. There you go. Here to measure. Yeah, 3.56 according to that. So that's good. So what I was planning to do was put, inject this on one side and then listen on the other channel of the scope. See what's going on. And I've had a look, and I'm pretty sure the input side is that one, and the output side is that one. When I put a smallish voltage from the power supply into that point, you got it made that point go down when I was pushing that side up. So I'm pretty sure the input side of the of the oscillator is on the right here, and the output is on the left. So if we start this up now. No, it hasn't made any difference. Yeah, we don't really get much out. Okay, what if it was around the other way? Well, that's better. No, still not starting up though. Okay, I guess it was the other way around then. Because that is inverting the signal like you'd expect when you have a, a crystal that has that um, Schmidt inverting buffer thing inside it. Yeah, that's disappointing. So I guess it's not the oscillator that is the problem, it's probably something inside that chip. Let's try it a few more times and hope. Alright then, definitely seems to be a loud enough signal. I was thinking the whole thing would just come to life at that point. Alright then, so it's not just the oscillator, there's more to it than that. I've taken a look at the part number of this chip, which is... MN1512VTP and then I've looked up several other service manuals for similar VCRs in this range and most of them do have this chip but the last letter of that part number is different and I uh, looked up, tried to find a data sheet when I was looking at the crystal interface to see which is the in and in the out but there's no comprehensive information but it is a 4-bit microcontroller dedicated for TV tuner type applications. Yeah, I think the last letter of the part number that I've added for what's programmed into it, presumably VT means it's for VTR and P for this one is whatever software this has and the other one had Y or G. The other ones I was looking at, yeah. So we can't swap the chip from another different, from a different model VCR because that's very likely to have the wrong software in it, we'd have to get one from this exact model. And I do have one of this exact model, so we might grab that, check it, and then swap this whole board over into this one, see if that brings it to life. If it does, then perhaps we'll try changing the chip. Although that doesn't seem very fun because it's a quite high density 64 pin chip. So perhaps to finish this off, we'll just take a look under that board to see if there's anything dodgy going on in there. And then we'll do a part two. I think. We'll do a part two with changing boards and things with another of the same model VCR. So this is mostly clipped in. Oh, it's got hinges there. Okay, so it should be pretty easy. Just undo the red screws from the front. There's one cable to undo there, which is for the audio level meters. 
Oops. Those things, what do you call it? Sliders. Now that should hinge up. And it's got a cover under it. Maybe need some shielding for some reason. Oh dear, is there nut and bolt on that bit? I think that's so that you can just swing it out of the way. See, is there anything untoward going on here? Looks like someone's had a go at it. It's a little bit of scratching around that area. Like someone's poked it around a bit. I wonder if that's something I did way back around when I first got it to see. Because there's also soldering that's being touched up in this area. So maybe I was looking for dry joints. And there's some parts there that run pretty warm. But nothing looks obviously bad. But yeah, we could probably can get the desoldering tool onto that. And desolder the whole chip if we need to. Okay, well, I think we'll leave that one there and we'll come back next time and we'll get out another VCR of the similar model. What? Well, we'll get out another VCR of the same model and we'll see if we can use parts from that to get this one working just for fun. Great, so that's first look at National NV870. ECR with hi-fi stereo sound. Oh yeah, I did, when looking in the service manual, I did find that other board on the top that I'd said was, looked like video stuff. I think that whole thing is the FM audio decoder and encoder. So that whole board there is just for the getting the hi-fi sound. So presumably the other version of this uh, NV450 or something will be very similar inside. It just won't have that or that and the head will be one without the hi-fi heads on it and I think that just that bit there and a bit on the main board is the video stuff anyway we're gonna park that there and we'll come back next time and see what we can do to get this going I'll well put that back while we're here Guess we don't need to look in that part anymore great stick around for part two